Hello students, Mr. Courtney here. In this video, we're going to be talking about exceptions to the octet rule. We already, we've already mentioned that all elements or all atoms would need eight valence electrons, except hydrogen, which you said would need two. So if we look at the example of the John DeLewis dark structure for CH4, we look at the needed, how many electrons are needed. We need eight for carbon, two for each hydrogen, so that gives us eight, plus eight is 16 in total. How many are available? One from each hydrogen, because hydrogen has one valence electron, so that's four, plus four gives us eight. So that means our shared will be eight, and if we divide the shared by two, that gives us our bonds of four. Carbon is our central atom. Hydrogen is never the central atom. Carbon, we draw our structure, our skeleton structure, and we add our four bonds. And we notice that we have eight electrons around carbon. Two, four, six, eight. And there you have it. So here we'll see that hydrogen is not the only exception to the octet rule. Beryllium is an exception also. And beryllium only needs four electrons to be stable. So let's look at an example of, of this here. So if beryllium needs four, so let's do our needed available shared and calculate the number of bonds we would expect. So beryllium, four plus the two from each hydrogen, four plus four would give us eight. But how many do we actually have available? We have two from beryllium and one from each hydrogen, so that gives us a total of four. Our shed will be four, our bonds will be two. Least electronegative, hydrogen can never be in the middle, so that means BE, hydrogen on either side. We add our two bonds, and there you have it. Beryl hydrogen is stable, it has two, it has two here. Beryllium is stable, it has two, and two is four. The other exception to the octet rule we'll see is boron, which boron needs six electrons to be stable. So let's look at this, exa this example, BCl3, boron trichloride. So let's look at how many will be needed, available, shared, and we calculate our bonds. Boron needs six. And each chlorine will need 886. Right? So 8 3 is 24 plus 6 would give us 30. How many are available? 7 3s are 21 from the chlorine, and the 3 from boron would give, give us 24. That means we have 6 shared, and which will give us 6 divided by 2 will give us 3 bonds. Boron will be our central atom, or chlorine atoms will be around it. And we have our three bonds. Then we add our lone pairs to each chlorine. Three lone pairs to each chlorine. Kind of faint. There we go. Remember, always check your total number of electrons used. They will add up to the number available. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty, twenty-two, twenty-four. 16, 18, 20, 22, 24. And remember, we said boron only needed six, so that's two, four, and six. Now, we can also have an expanded shell or an expanded octet, as some people like to say. Only elements in the third period or greater can have that expanded shell. Well, what do we mean by an expanded shell? That means they have more than eight electrons around the central atom. And that is because they can use their d orbitals. Remember, once we get to the third period where the d orbitals, d orbital is available for use. So the elements can make use of the d orbitals once they're in the third period or greater. And that way they can have more than eight electrons around the central atom. So drawing the Lewis dot structures for the expanded shell compounds is pretty much similar to 
the Lewis dot structures for ordinary covalent compounds. So we get up to step three, and it's the same. If it equals the number of it, electrons you calculated, we're done. So we do the same thing, and once we start counting our electrons, if it's equal to the number of electrons we calculated, number of available electrons, sorry, then we're done. If it is less than the available electron, electrons, then we have to place the needed electrons or the needed number of electrons around the central atom. Okay, when we do the examples, this will make more sense to you. So our first example is sulfur dioxide, SO2. So we look at how many electrons are needed. We get a total of 24. Eight threes are 24. How many are available? They're both in group 6. So we have 2 and 3. 6 threes are 18. How many are going to be shared? Will be 6. And how many bonds we expect will be 3. Okay, so let's look at this. So sulfur, central atom, oxygen. Now we know we need 3 bonds. 1, 2. So we can add third one here. We add our lone pair of electrons. Two. So we add two, four. Makes that stable. Two, four, six, eight, and two here. We count our electrons. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen. So here we're done. So we see this has nothing to do with our expanded octet. So that's a good example. All right, now let's look at the carbonate anion. So carbonate, we look at needed. We get a total of 32 because we have four, three oxygens, one carbon, total of 4, need an 8, so that's 32. How many are available? We're going to have a total of 22 from carbon and oxygen put together. Six threes are 18 from the oxygen, sorry, and plus four from the carbon. That gives us a 22. Plus we add the two from the negative, from the charge. So that gives us a total of 24. We're going to have eight shared. So we're going to have a bond of four, four bond. Carbon is our central atom. We draw our most symmetrical skeletal stru skeleton structure, oxygen around. Connect, add our single bonds. We know we need four, so that means we need to have a double bond somewhere. Now, where do we put the double bond? As of now, it's not important. Later on, we'll discuss where the double bond can be placed. Now, we need to add our lone pair of electrons around the, the oxygens. Two, four, six. That gives this eight. Two, three. 4, 6, that gives it 8. This one already has 4, so we only need to add 2 lone pair of electrons. Carbon is good. It has 2, 4, 6, 8. 2, 4, 6, 8. So we add all these up. You will get your available of 24 being used up. Okay, and the last thing we need to do now, remember, once we do ions, we always have to put parentheses or brackets around the ions and write the charge. Almost forgot to put that in. Okay, so let's look at this example here. PF5. So let's do our needed. If we do our needed, we'll get a total of 48. Six eights are 48. How many are available? We have a total of 40. Seven fives are 35 from the fluorine, five from the phosphorus. That gives us a total of 40. So that means we have a total of how many we expect to be shared? Eight. How many bonds do we expect? Four. What's our central atom? Phosphorus. But how many atoms of fluorine do we have? We have five. So we're, we have, we expect more bonds there. We have more surrounding atoms than we have bonds. So this is one that is not going to obey the octet rule because phosphorus is in, peri is in period 3. That's up. So now we add our central atom as, our central atom as phosphorus. 
you put the atoms of flu the fluorine atoms around it. Then we connect them with our bonds, and we see we end up using five bonds. Then we add our lone pairs. Two, four, six. So we can add six around each fluorine. So if we have six around each fluorine and we have five of them, so that's six fives are thirty. Alright, so we already have 30 around the fluorine. Missing two here. Good. So we have 30 around the fluorine now. Plus 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. That gives us 40 in total. And now I3 minus. How many electrons are needed? 8 threes are. 24. How many electrons are available? 7 threes are 21 plus 1 is 22. So how many electrons are going to be shared? We say 2. How many bonds we expect? 1. So iodine, we have 3 of them, but there's no way these 3 can be connected with 1 bond. So at this point you go like, huh? Or you may say that does not make any sense. So let's see how we, we saw that. So we go and we do this as normal. So we ignore the bonds, how many bonds we expect here. So we add our bonds. Then we add our lone pairs of electrons. So two, four, six. I already should have done this one here first. That's fine. So let's see now. How many have we used? 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. So we've used 20, but we have 22 available. So what do we do with the extra two electrons? We take the extra two and place them around the central atom. So once we've added the electrons and we have leftovers, the leftovers are added to the central atom. If you look back at your step, this was the last step that you do. And then we know it's an ion, so we have to put it in parentheses with the charge. And there you go. Okay, so let's look at this example now. Uh, let's look at how many are needed would be 40 so you should be able to calculate this now available would be 36 uh, so we expect how many to be shared four and we saying that there'll be two bonds and you'll be like in your mind you'll be saying this makes no sense and once you say it makes no sense then you should be thinking oh this is our expanded octet So now we add our bonds, we add our lone pairs, three lone pairs to each, or six electrons. Okay, you can go ahead, once you've done that, go ahead and calculate the amount of electrons you've used. So if you want to pause the video, you can go ahead and pause. So you should have realized that you've used 32. So that means we need to add, we have four left over, so we need to add two sets of lone pairs to the central atom. And there you have it. Now, where do we add it? Add it anywhere, but do not add it to a bond that exists. So we cannot add it over these bonds. All we do is just add it anywhere around the central atom, but not to something that's our, to a bond that's already created. Okay, so there you have it for the exceptions to those dot structures. I'm out. Blessings.